Breaking news, this just in. John sends an urgent message to the seven churches. The Antichrist is on the run. The church is also on the run. And new choruses have just been released from the choir of the 24 elders and much, much more. What? What? Since when? I mean, I mean, what does this, all right, let's see here. The producer of the show has just handed me a memorandum about a change in this week's content. Seems like we're going to be covering a story about papyrus. We'll return to our regularly scheduled program next week. You're watching the Caffeinated Bible. My name is David Paris, and the goal of this channel is to take what I've been teaching on seminary and make it available to anybody on YouTube anywhere. When I was filming the videos on how did they write the New Testament, I mean literally write the New Testament, see the link below this video for those, I found a link to a homeschool site that sells kits for making your very own papyrus. Being a curious lad and because they only cost 10 bucks, I ordered a kit. This past week, my grandkids and I put that kit to the test, or should I say, that kit put us to the test. But before I give away the ending, Let's pick up our adventure from seven days ago. Hey, Evie. Hey, Papa. Look what came, the papyrus making kit came. Great. How come only one of you gnomes has a mask on? Uh, because the other one's been vaccinated. Ready? Let's make this. Here's the kit. You can open that up. I think we'll use this this. Well, the papyrus strips, we're going to put in some warm water and then we're going to let them soak. And then after they've soaked for a couple hours, then we'll roll them out. Okay. And it'll make papyrus. Mm -hmm. And the papyrus, as it's soaking, the starches from the papyrus come out. And then that's going to be sort of the glue that holds it all together because you keep soaking the papyrus in it. So you can see from this finished one, that you've got strips that have been rolled out and they go both directions. Huh. Okay, here's this papyrus that's been soaking. What we have to do here is kind of take one strip out at a time and then we're gonna roll this and the idea here is over several days of rolling it, this is gonna become like transparent almost it's really gonna uh oh they say don't roll it too hard because it'll fry and i just frayed my first piece so i think the trick here is a gentle roll like this yeah that looks good it frayed a little bit but i think it's gonna be okay is this gun I don't know, I've never done this before. I think we just wanna, uh oh, we're getting a little pieces stuck here. We can probably smooth thin this out more. I don't think we'd make very good Egyptians. How about you? No, not very good paper. <laughs> Papyrus making Egyptians, at least. No. Is that one or two? Two, apparently. Okay. How are we doing? Mm, pretty well. Don't forget, we're going to be overlapping them. One piece is going to go this way, and one piece is going to go that way. So we can probably handle some fraying. We're learning about ancient Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia in history. Uh huh. And we learned cuneiform, which is like the alphabet. Uh -huh. Some of the letters are really like U is just this weird, one little weird symbol. And then like O is huge and complicated. You know, they invented this almost 2000 BC. No. Pretty cool. Yeah. Up until then, like cuneiform, like you were talking about, they had to do it into clay tablets. So this made it cheaper and easier to carry around. Oh, that's a thick one. Papyrus would be a lot 
lighter than clay. Yep. I think you do better at this than I do. I messed up that last piece. But it's still also kind of thick. Okay, well maybe we need to let that guy soak more. We might produce the worst papyrus in the world. Yeah. The Egyptians, I think, first made it. They had some practice because yeah. they would do it for a while. It's kind of strange that we like buy something to do it now. You want to do the last one? No, I'll let you do it. Yeah, they feel much softer now that they've been rolled. Okay. I think we just need to put a little bit more water in there because it's a lot got rolled out. And then we let this sit for like two, three hours and we roll it again. Hey guys. Hi Pop Pop. How you doing? Good. Why does only one of the dwarves have a mask? Because the other one's dumb and doesn't believe in vaccines. Hmm. You ready to make papyrus? Woo! Let's go. All right, let me get everything out. Evie knows what to do, so she can explain this whole process to you, okay, Kai? Mm -hmm. I make some flat, and you, you can't press too hard. Okay, so let him feel this piece before you put it in there. Feel how thick it is. So you just felt that guy, right? Mm -hmm. Now feel this guy before it's rolled out. Oh wow, that's very... It really absorbs the water, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Just keep rolling it out. Pretty well. Look how much water squeezes out of them. A lot. trickier. It looks like it's easy, but it's a little tricky too. How you doing? Your other gnome got his mask on. Yeah, he went to the doctor today and he got a new mask. Yes. Come on in. Okay, so today we have to roll out the strips, place them on here, a real wide one. We'll put those down first, okay? Yeah. It just reabsorbs the water. Okay. Every time. Spots you can see through it more than others, just like this. Look at me, you can see through this oh. just like you can see through that. water out as possible by pressing it flat. Yes, between the papers. What do you think? It's good. Okay. And let's carefully bring up this to the garage. I've got a thing to crush it. I can't lift it. Yeah, 
here, let me put it on, okay? This is that my is this like is so ah, this is metal, my slab. metal or something. So, we'll let the papyrus crush, and in a couple days we'll take this off. Should be dried out and crushed smooth. What do you think? Let's hope it works. Hey guys. Hi, Papa. You have a good ride over? Yep. All right, you ready to take a look at the papyrus? Yep. All right, let's go into the garage. All right, let's check it out. Okay, let me take this out of the way. What do you think? Looks pretty good. It's cool how it turns from watery to like this. It's pretty, it's pretty solid, isn't it? Mm-hmm. What do you think, Kai? Looks pretty good. Pretty amazing what we did. It's really pretty translucent. You can almost see right through it. And it's kind of stiff, too. Pretty amazing. So in making the papyrus, what did you learn, Abby? It must have uh, taken a long time. Like, it took a, w a week to make this. Yeah, and lots and lots of rolling. So Kai, in this whole process, what did you learn about making papyrus? A week needs widen out quite a bit and they go much longer. It's They're really thin. Yeah, but they were kind of thick little sticks when we started and they just smushed. All right, you guys have fun doing this project? Yep. You glad that you can go to the store and buy paper instead of having to make papyrus for your homework? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? All right, high fives. Yeah, let's go. So here's our finished papyrus product. It actually came out a lot better than I thought it would. We left the edges kind of ragged and stuff to create sort of that ancient look to it. And I thought I would add a quick conclusion to this video about our experience and what we learned. First, this was a great project to undertake with my grandkids. They must have put in a good seven to eight hours with me rolling out the papyrus at different times. The video does not do justice to the amount of time that they put into working on this. If you have kids or grandkids, this is a great project. I was also struck by the amount of time it took to produce this one small sheet of papyrus. Now I'm sure in the ancient world, they would have had some sort of process and system set up for making this. They would have had a much larger setup for making the papyrus. But I'm sure that is probably the only thing those people did. And I imagine most of the labor would have been done by children or slaves. It took us a week of working on this for more than one hour a day to produce this one small sheet of papyrus. And really to write on this, it would have been tricky. Now we can just nip out to the store and purchase paper in any shape form that we like for a very, very reasonable price. Finally, to actually hold and work with the various papyrus strips gives you a tactile feel and appreciation for this whole process that you couldn't get otherwise. It's not really the type of knowledge that you can pass along or share with others easily, but it definitely deepened my appreciation and understanding of papyrus. It's similar in certain ways to visiting biblical sites in the Middle East. I've had the chance to teach in Turkey at various sites in the past, like Ephesus, and just walking around those ruins really deepens your understanding of the biblical world as well. This is a lot like that, only you don't have to get on a cramped jet suffer the food they serve you, be hit with jet lag, or spend a small fortune. This biblical exploration can be done at home on the cheap. What's not to love about that? I will include a link to the website where you can purchase your own papyrus kit. I would love to hear what your impressions are after making your own papyrus, which I highly recommend. Till next week, when we return to our regularly scheduled programming on Revelation, Peace.